Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time to launch a brand new mini-series about Shenzhen I.O. When I played hardware engineering recently, this game has been suggested to me and it is freaking amazing. I've only played it for approximately an hour to get used to the controls and the functionality. Essentially, it's a game about circuits and programming. It has its own programming language and everything is actually explained in this handy PDF. So I would suggest you actually have a look into the PDF whenever you meet a new component, you can read about it and also the basic functionality. However, in this video I'm trying to explain you the basics at least a little bit so you won't have to read as much. First of all, let's have a look into the concept mail right here and you can see I've already started the first few puzzles, however we're gonna go through the first one as well. Now I'm not going to read all of that because it's kind of the storyline of the game and I don't want to take everything away from you, there's gonna be a lot of spoilers in terms of puzzle solving, but I hope you're still gonna enjoy it and of course important, read the manual. However, let's start with the first puzzle. Well, it's not really a puzzle, it's a circuit that we have to build. So what we want to do is build a fake security camera and we can open the concept in the camera or CAD. Now I've already got the solution up right here, however we're gonna start with a new design in order to explain exactly what's happening. So let's open this new design and we can see half of the stuff is already done. What we want to achieve is control the active and network outputs with fixed repeating signals as indicated in the verification tab. So what is the verification tab? It is right here and this is actually a beautiful concept they implemented here. So this is basically a timeline. You can see the active output needs to be active after, let's say this is one time unit. So after six time units, it needs to be active for six time units, then deactivated for six. Is that even six? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. <laughs> so currently, if we run through this, you can see the active output here. So this is an output and wherever you have a yellow arrow, this is an input. So in this module right here, this is basically a CPU where you can add some lines of programming. This CPU has two outputs and two inputs. So all we want this CPU to do is activate this output through the P0 for 6 seconds, then deactivate it for 6 seconds and so on and so forth. So let's have a look at this programming code. First of all, we want to move the number zero towards the P0 output. So in the beginning, the output will be zero. All we did is basically move this line to zero, no matter where it is. So this is actually zero, and if we go up, this is 100. So 50 would be somewhere in between. So all we did with the active output is we made sure that P0 is at zero. Next up, we want to sleep for 6 time units, as you can see, on the same state. And after 6 time units, we move the number 100 to the P0 output. So 100 basically means it's fully active. And therefore, we moved this one up, 100, and then we sleep for another 6 seconds. And then it just repeats itself. So if we go through this step by step, you can see which line is active. Currently, we have outputted 0 through the P0 output. Then we go towards the next step, which is sleep for 6 time units. And you can see this is continuing, 6 time units. Then we move 100 to P0, which makes this line go up. And then we sleep for another 6 time units. However, at the bottom, you can see nothing is happening. So we will have to program the network output ourselves. Okay, so let's get our inputs in here. So we want to reset the simulation and take this CPU. Normally, you only have this CPU available in this scenario, but since I already played ahead a little bit, I have these two modules unlocked. Anyways, what do we want to achieve? First of all, we want to sleep for four time units, right? Or maybe we hook it up first. The P0 is what we're gonna use to hook up to the network. Maybe we do it the same way as the other cable, something like that. 
Okay, now if we look down below, we want to first of all sleep for four time units, right? And then we want to move 100 to P0 because we want to go up here and we want to do this for two time units. So we sleep another two. Then we want to move 0, P0. So at the moment we are down here. We want to sleep again. Okay, let's do that. Sleep one time unit, then move 100, P0 then sleep another one time unit and finally move zero to P zero. Okay, at this point we are right here and we can see that the pattern is basically repeating itself. Let's actually use the advance button which will make it go forward one time unit at a time. So you can basically see what's happening and from the looks of it, yes, we got that one right. So let's simulate that and check it out. It will go through a bunch of possibilities so you can see the scenario slightly changes every now and then. There we go, we did it and we will be graded in terms of production cost and power usage. And I think your friends will be listed here, I'm not so sure. Good, okay, let's return to the email and actually take care of the next circuit. At this point we had another email, but we also had another task here. Replacement factory module. Okay, it seems what we have to do is simply build a control signal amplifier. So something that strengthens the signal. Let's check out what we are working with. We're gonna start up a new design. There we go. The task is the control in should be multiplied by two and copied to control out. Let's have a look at the verification. Right, so here we have a simple input. It looks as though this input is given. So if we simulate this, yeah, you can see the input is given at all times. That is great. So let's actually go ahead and grab this module here. This button right here sends out signals and we want to send these signals into the P0. And I just realized that shouldn't this be an input right here? Should I maybe lead this to X0 right there? No, pin type mismatch. Ah, I guess these are actually to hook up modules with other modules. So yeah, <laughs> don't completely understand it just yet, but we're gonna make the best out of it. That means P1 is gonna be our control out and I want this to be nicely cabled up. Okay, so since we already have the control in, that means we can simply take that. We are gonna move the number that the control in stores, which is P0, and we want to move it to our accumulator because we need to store it in here in order to do some multiplication. That means what we want to do is either add whatever we have in the accumulator, that would make it double as much, or we could say multiply by two. Let's actually test this out step by step. So the first number we have is 25 and we move this to the accumulator and then we multiply it and you can see it's double now. So the next step would be to actually bring this towards our outputs, the new number that we have, which is gonna be move accumulator to P1, okay? And then of course we must not forget we must also sleep for one second in between each of these. So sleep for, no, it's actually a time unit, but I'm probably gonna say second a lot of the time. Okay, so this theoretically should already work. Let's go through it step by step. Yeah, accumulating, now I have 50 here. We are gonna output that and then sleep for one second. Then we take the new number, which is zero. So both of the lines should be zero. Yeah, I think we can uh, simulate this without any issues. And this time you will see the graph is changing dramatically with every test run so that we can be sure our circuits have no bugs. Great, okay, we did it once again and we have been graded. I don't know if that was good or not, but I don't think there are too many better solutions here, at least in the very simple circuits in the beginning. Okay, what is the next thing we could do? We could actually enjoy a game of, what is it? Solitaire. Oh yes, indeed, that would be right here. You can just click that and play a game of Solitaire with a little bit of a difference to it because you have to relearn all of the cards. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not here to play solitaire, I'm actually here to build circuits. So the next thing we're gonna take care of is a pulse generator. Let's open the concept. We're gonna start up a new design and we can see we have a button input, I think, and that would be the pulse output. 
When the button is pushed, generate pulses as indicated in the verification tab until the button is released again. Interesting, let's check this out. So the button is being pushed in varying intervals here. And during these varying intervals, we want to have a stable pulse. Okay, let's go ahead and pick a module. I think we might be able to do it with this one, not sure. I don't think we need too many lines of code for this. And we're gonna hook up the button to this guy and P1 goes to the pulse. Good. At this point, it's time to introduce a new functionality. You can actually test things and compare them with each other. For that, you have to use terms such as test equal. And then you can compare two things. For instance, you could compare uh, zero to the accumulator or something like that. We can also do a test greater than or test less than, etc, etc. So this is a new thing that we're going to utilize right now. What we want to test here is the input. We want to check if the input is greater than zero. That basically means it's on. If it is zero, it's off. So test greater than and then we want to test the p0 input from the button and if it is greater than zero then we want to do something and with this particular programming language used in this game what you have to do in order to correspond with these conditions is to use a plus or minus sign everything you write behind the minus is going to be ignored if this condition is true and all the plus signs are going to to be executed. So what do we want to happen if P0 is greater than 0? Then we basically want to output something. So if the button is pressed, then we for instance want to move 100 to accumulator or we could say move 100 to P1, but then we have a problem with how to deactivate it and I think we can do it a little bit slicker. So since we know the accumulator is already 0, we can simply invert it, so we could say not. So every mathematical calculation you do is always going to be done on the accumulator. So not simply means inverting the accumulator, which means it goes from 0 to 100. And after that, we could output what we have in the accumulator by saying move accumulator to P1. Okay, and we don't have to use a plus sign here because if the button is pressed right here, if it is greater than 0, that means it's pressed. Only then we are going to invert the accumulator and that means otherwise it's going to be zero. And that is actually something we should not forget because right now I don't think, yeah, it's not working. <laughs> one thing we forgot is actually to sleep for one second. And the other thing I forgot is to set a condition for if it is not true, because if it is not true, we simply want to reset the accumulator. So we're going to reset the accumulator to zero. So now you can basically see when this condition is true, then this is happening otherwise this is happening and then this is happening either way so if we go through this code step by step we can see that currently uh, the button is not pressed and therefore we move the accumulator to zero which it already was since we were at the beginning and once that is done we sleep for one second so let's advance one more and one more i guess because here it gets interesting now here for the first time the button is being pressed and therefore what we should be seeing is the plus sign is being executed so we change the accumulator from 0 to 100 then we move whatever we have in the accumulator to the pulse and then we sleep for one second so what is happening now if we continue one step the signal is still on and now we are inverting the accumulator once again and that's why the not was very important in this circuit because we can save ourselves a couple of lines by making the loop smaller otherwise I would have to set the accumulator to 100 and then set it back to zero but since we can simply invert it we can do it like that it's now being inverted now we move the accumulator to p1 sleep again and so on and so forth and you can see this seems to be working out nicely yeah, let's uh, finish the simulation here. This was also not too complicated and we also have been introduced to a comparison functionality and also how you include the conditions with plus and minus signs. Great stuff here, great stuff. And we did it. Of course, I already knew how to complete the circuit, so that was easy. Let's return to the email and I think we might be able to do one more, namely the light up signs. 
Also right here we're gonna start with a new design and holy cow, there is a lot of outputs here. We have a click 0, click 1, drink 0, 1 and 2. Control the display segments with fixed repeating signals as indicated in the verification tab. So this is actually great, you can see we have all of these outputs that we have to configure and then this billboard is gonna be animated. And hopefully we can do a drinking animation, you can kind of see it maybe it's maybe too small for youtube there you go anyways for this one we are gonna need a lot more let's maybe configure zero and one because they seem to be pretty regular and i think we can do them with just one simple module here with one simple cpu i'm gonna actually bring this down a little bit maybe to this point let's hook up click zero to p zero and the click one is gonna be hooked up to p one Okay, let's think this through. We already have zero in the accumulator, so we could take zero in order to output to click one. Let's do that actually directly. We move the accumulator to P1. Then we basically, I guess, want to invert the accumulator. Yeah, let's do that. We invert the accumulator and then move accumulator to P2. Okay, and after that, I guess we want to sleep. Oh, no, no, not P2. Of course, we want to use P0 here. That got a little bit confusing. However, after that we want to sleep for one second. So what it should do is activate P1. That seems to be good. Yeah, and now it should invert the signals since we already started with the accumulator at 100 in the second turn. Yeah, you can see this is working already for the click 0 and click 1. That was easy. Now we have to take care of the rest of the modules and I think I might want to bring this down slightly and actually hook it up differently like so, just so that we have a little bit more space for the other modules. So if we actually look at the these graphs we can see that the drink 0 and drink 2 are much easier patterns. They repeat a lot quicker with less steps that you have to program in. So I guess drink 0 and drink 2 are modules that we could combine and then we would have to use another module in order to do the drink 1. So let's see how we want to do that. And by the way, by this time you also unlocked these two components. This is just a more advanced processor with 9 lines of code and then we have a bridge. So you could actually bridge over, no, you cannot bridge over a module, but you can bridge over another cable. And I guess that's exactly what we're gonna do here. We're gonna take this bad boy and hook it up to drink zero. Maybe we do it like so. Then uh, drink zero should be going into P zero. Can we accomplish that? How can I rotate this around? Oh no, I don't know how to rotate it. So I guess we're gonna do it a little bit more complicated because now I'm gonna hook up drink zero to P1 and then drink two to P0 and that's gonna be a little bit confusing, but just bear with me. So we hook this up and then we hook this up. That's good. Then drink two goes beneath here and all the way up to P0. Okay, so let's forget about this module just yet, we are just looking at drink 0 and drink 2. We start with drink 0 being enabled at 100, so that's what we shall do first, I think. We are going to move 100 to P1, which is drink 0, remember? Okay, and at the same time drink 2 is 0, so we don't have to do anything about that. We can now sleep for 6 time units. So sleep six and then we want to deactivate this input or output. So move zero P1 because here we go down again. Then we want to wait for another one time unit and then activate drink two. So let's sleep for one and then move 100 to P0 which is our drink two. After that we want to wait for two time units so sleep 2 and then we want to move 0 to P0 and after that, hmm, I guess sleep for one more time unit, right? Because after this point uh, we are now, no, hold the phone, I did it wrong. Move 100 P0, then sleep for 2, then move 0 P0, sleep for 1. Oh, that was actually great. And then move 100 P1. I think that's already working. Let's check this out. We're gonna simulate this and... Oh, oh, yeah, it is working! And look at that, the animation actually also did its trick here. Look at that, check this out. Clicking on the mouse and drinking a cup. 
there's just the drink one output that is still missing and we're gonna do that separately now so let's grab another one of those units and we're just gonna i don't know uh, i guess yeah i guess this is a good spot we take another bridge do this hook this up and p0 okay p0 is gonna be drink one what we want to do is simply code it i guess so we're gonna sleep for six and then we want to move 100 to p0 then we want to sleep for one we want to move zero to p zero then sleep for one no actually sleep for two then we want to move 100 to p zero and then sleep for one and then move uh, zero to p zero so we just programmed in these two little spikes and at this point we waited again because this is where the pattern repeats itself and we should be able to simulate this now without any issues look the drinking animation functions great and it's gonna run through four tests as per usual with slight differences so great can you see where this game is going and of course this is also only the beginning there's gonna be so so much more to this i mean modules and and it's crazy. You should have a look at the Steam page and check out a couple of the pictures of the more advanced constructions. It's great. Anyways, guys, with that out of the way, we're gonna wrap up this first episode. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave down your support. It's always very important on the first episodes to get your feedback and what you think about it. Also, give me tips in case I do something wrong. And also, don't forget to play this game. It is out on Steam since yesterday, I believe. Have a good one, guys, and see you soon. Bye-bye.